smoke It's red eye, you ain't my ally You don't wanna get boxed up like Jedi When I remember the days with the semi Cut through your sky like the kite Get your papers, the haters You don't par around here with the best they us Picking that shit, they're all instigators Kojo, I wanna thank you for participating in uh, a series that uh, we call Self Made um, and for you to know, self-made is all about uh, what I consider people, artists, uh, actors, sports figures, business people who have done it on their own. Yeah. To me, you're on that rise. Thank Something special is happening. I appreciate um, that. So I wanted to hear from you, kind of, I, I guess my first question is, what's driving you? Where, where? What's the inner self that's making you pursue your path? Um, I feel like just, just coming from, you know, the struggle, um, growing up, um, having certain experiences, you know, in life has helped me to that like, kind of motivate myself and that like, want me to win more, you know? And um, yeah, and I feel like music is, it's, it's, I'm very passionate about music and that's helped me to express myself a bit more and go for that goal. Was it always music? Was there anything, you're young to me, but <laughs> yeah. was there anything before music? Was there anything that you wanted to be before? Um, I wanted to be a, here we'll say a footballer, Okay. but sure. you, you know as soccer, Yep. Um, I wanted to pursue that as a career. Why? I've, I've been see seeing it on TV from a very young age, you know, um, family members watching it um, and just be seeing them, you know, the way they were passionate about the sport was like, yo, I really want to get involved in football. And um, that's what we know in, in the UK, football is a main sport. So Was there a team you rooted for? Yeah, Manchester United. Why? Uh, my cousins supported them. Uh, I grew up watching them support them, so uh, that was the first team I saw play football, you know, on TV, and um, they're one of the best teams in the world. So, when did music kick in? Um, I was introduced to music from a young age. Uh, my dad, he was into reggae music. Um, he's a rasta himself. Where is he from? Uh, Dominica, in the Caribbean. Yep, and. Um, but I wasn't really the, the singer. I didn't want to like pursue it like that. I was just fond of the, you know. The music itself. Yeah, exactly. And um, later on, when I was around, I'll probably say 18 years, um, that's when I started like going to the actual studio and recording music. How did that happen? Like, why were you? Um, <laughs> it's a funny. My, my my friend had a a, a birthday party, um, and he had like a studio in his house, and he's a producer, and um, we used to like play beats instrumentals outside in the car park, and all our friends will, will be around and we'll just freestyle, and um, I got involved for the first time, and they they were really shocked like wow like, your friends yeah, Kojo like, you could really you got something there, like, come to the studio and record. I was like, nah, man, music's not me, like, I want to play football, you know, and do certain things, and they're like, no, nah, just come, and I went there, recorded my first song. Um, do you remember I, what it was? Yeah, Want From Me. This was in, like, 2014, and um, I put it on SoundCloud, and the buzz Were you was listening just, to SoundCloud at the time? Were yeah. Were you getting music from it? Yeah. Like, I, I wasn't really, like, into SoundCloud, but because my friends and, like, they were producers and yeah. they were into music, they were showing me what SoundCloud was. So I put it on SoundCloud and um, the response was crazy. You Did know? you freestyle the song? Did you write yeah, the song ahead of time? I didn't write it. Who freestyled? Who, 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 how about, the, how about the, the melody? Where did that come from? In my head. Like, literally, it was a natural thing. Any inspiration for it? Um, as I said, um, my dad was a, like he was into reggae, so I used to listen to you know the Bob Marleys and the the, the Sizzlers and the Sean Pools and stuff like that. So it was like I think it was a natural thing inside of me, and and that's what I was used to as well. And then 
I just created a song. So when I'm cur I'm curious because I love that. You uh, put it on SoundCloud. Yeah. How quickly did you see response? Um after the first week, you know, the first week people going crazy on the social media like Twitter and What happened? Um they just started like promoters and DJs were contacting us, like, yo, we need a show, like, yo, this is getting crazy, like they'll play it they'll put it in mixes. You know, the mixes that go on SoundCloud, they'll put it on those and people used to request like, yo, who's this? And then DJs were like, yo, people are asking for this, like, we need a show. Did you take it seriously? Never. I didn't. Because I was doing certain things on the side and I was like, yo, I'm not going to really make anything out of this, you know? And um, when I went to my first show, on a, it was a boat and I got booked for £50. To do one song? One song. How long afterwards? Uh, probably like then, after the, after like two weeks after release. So it was a bo like a boat party? Yeah, a boat party and um, went there. Till this day I haven't got my £50. No, he didn't <laughs> Why? I don't know. But How many people were on the boat? Oh, about 40, 50 people. Did you think people, did you know, ne did you think never, they ever would show up? Never. And the response was crazy, like everybody knew the words. I was like, wow, you know what, let's, let's, let's give it a go, you know? And um, DJs constantly started booking me and I was going out of, you know, the city to Cambridge, Birmingham, and the response was crazy. And then I just took it from there. Do, when, do you remember the first time someone recognized you? Ooh. I'm going to say my second show in Cambridge, people started recognizing me like, yo, that's Kojo. Nah, 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 nah. I actually can't remember. Isn't that odd that you, I, at the time, can't remember. The, the fact that you can't, like, uh, it's not that long ago. Yeah, because I, I, at first I didn't actually put it on YouTube. Yeah. So nobody really knew my face like that. Yeah. So I think when I put my first video, I did a video to it, I put it on YouTube, but I, yeah, they started recognizing my face after that. Who, who was, anybody, who was supporting you or pushing you in this direction, who was um, saying this is something you should pursue? Um, one person I'll say that was really pushing me and supporting was my producer, GA. Um, yeah, when we first linked up, he was like, yo, you got something there, man. Like, you need to really take this music serious. So um, I took his word and, you know, we never looked back. Is since. the sound different then versus today? Very different. I feel like I've improved more and I've perfected it. Even though there's still more to come, um, I feel like what I'm doing right now is the actual sound and it's a big difference. It's a big difference, but you know. What do you, what do you, what do you attest that to? Why? Why ch if it's working, why change it? Uh, it's, it's not about changing it, it's just, you know, just trying new things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just challenging yourself as an artist. Um, you want to call yourself an artist, um, any type of sound to do with music, um, you should be able to tackle that. You know? How long, when, do you remember the second song you did? Oh, uh, <laughs> Yo, All right, the name of this song, yeah, it's crazy. It's called Anaconda, isn't it? Yeah, it, it speaks for itself. It was about a girl, you know. Um, it didn't really hit like the first one, but it did. It did its thing. And um, was that freestyle too? That was freestyle. Everything. Is everything you're doing freestyle? Freestyle. Like I wouldn't write it down. You I'll don't write I'll, anything down. Nah, I'll think of the melody, then I'll think of the words after. That's how I that's how I operate in the studio and yeah. The second song didn't really kick off like that, but it it, it was part of the journey, you know. Have you felt because it's unusual, uh, at least based on the people I get to talk to, yeah, to have that. I don't want to do this. This is not <laughs> my thing. Yeah, I did it, and all of a sudden, boom! It's a reaction. Yeah, has it been up all the way? Um. At first, like. The first kind of buzz that I had, it was just to do with the, the university 
community. Yeah. Not that outside of that, you know? Um, just universities will book, man. Will book me, sorry. And um, it, it, it was it was all right. But then um, when I made a song called Done Talking, yeah. that's when, yo, people from outside were like, yo, who's this kid like? Yo, he, he's, he's going crazy. And that's when it started to go like really Even up. faster yeah, and farther. Yeah. And that, it, it took, I think it was after like two years since the first release. Yeah. That's when everything started to kick off properly. You coined Afro Swing? Yeah. What is it to you? To me, um, I think it's the, the sound of today. Um, you know, it's the mixture of Afro, which is the African sound, the African element. But it swings from other genres like dancehall, um, you could say reggae, which is the same kind of thing, um, R&B, UK rap, rap, um, and New Jack Swing as well. But a lot of people, they don't really know what New Jack Swing is. They'll probably take it as R&B, but yeah. R&B really came from New Jack Swing. You know what I mean? So um, I kind of like mix it up. So where does the African come from for you? Ghana. Okay. And um, have you been? Yeah, yeah. Have you been since you've done music? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do they yeah. know you? Yeah. Well, they they hold it down. They really hold it down, and um, I feel like just going over there and um, spending time over there kind of helped it as well with my music. You know, having that African dialect, you know, it, it all plays a part. What um, do you listen to? In general, yeah. It, I listen to R&B. Um, Who do you listen to? Ooh, I Who listen, do you like right now? Right now, old school artists or new school artists? Well, how about both? Both. Old school, um, I'll say people like Sean Paul. Huh. Um, if we're talking about rappers, people like 50, um, Jigger, Jay-Z. Um, New school, I like Kodak Black, I like A Boogie. Um, you did a song with him? Yeah. Yeah, he did a remix to one of my songs, Check. Was that, was that the first person to do a remix? Who, of, who oh, as in international yeah. was? Um, yeah. What'd that feel like? Amazing. Um, different. It shows that, you know, the work that I've been putting in has been noticed. And, um, Did he contact you? Um, we met through, through, through mutual people and um, yeah, he liked the song. He told me he liked the song and um, he put it on his um, International Artist EP. Do you, does that matter to you if, he li if someone like that likes it? Does to it me, to me um, I think so because he's coming across the pond, like he's yeah. way over there. Yeah. You know, he has no business listening to music over here. Yeah. But for him to like the song and, you know, put it and, and, and to actually write something to it, you know, it, it shows that your music could, you know, go to all four corners of the world. Who, who else, uh, who, who would you want to work with? Um, Meek. You know, Rick Ross, Kodak. There's a variety of people. Oh, we can introduce you to all those yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> variety of people, and, and I really, I really like what they're doing, man. And they've really set trends, you know. And um, really mess with it. Do Do you see, given your African roots, do you see you doing more in Africa? Yeah, for a fact. Um, I've got some music with certain African artists, you know that aren't released. Um, and I feel like the music should be like that, you know, just crossing different parts of the world. Because we say, you know, music's a language and people understand music. But, but I, contrary to that, yeah. you're doing something different. Yeah. And most people end up following what others are doing. Doing, yeah, yeah. So sure. I could see your label or other people trying to influence you no no no, don't do that do yeah. what's popular right now yeah. how do you stop how do you keep your identity and not lose you know not fall into that just stay true to yourself man 
um, believing in, you know, your craft and your creativity, you know, and um, just trying to put your vision to light. And I feel like uh, that's the way forward. You know? When you put out Done Talking, did, did you edit it? Did you fix it? Did you just put it out and say, screw it, this is... I didn't fix nothing. I, what I said on the track is how I actually said it in the studio, you know? And um, I feel like there's a reason for you to do that. Like, you wouldn't do that for no reason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's, it's just all about the sounds, man. And if the sounds are sounding right, go for it, man. So you've put out one mixtape to date, Golden yeah. Boy. That yeah. was your first? First project ever done. Big, uh, it meant a lot to me as well. You know, um, every song, and that had a meaning, um, and yeah, there's more to come, man. Definitely more to come. Are you gonna have a launch album? Yeah. You, th you know when you're gonna have it? Uh, we're working on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Uh, it's God's timing, you know. Um, the right time will come. 100%. So you just did a collab with Stefan? Oh yeah. What was that like? Big up, done, man. Big up, Steph. Um, that was sick, man. You know, um, I was in the studio with her. She's very, she's a she's a very vibey person. Yeah. You know, and uh, I respect her like a lot. You know what I mean? And um, very how did talented. that come about? Um, you know, we're from London. She she's obviously she knows the work. Um, I've noticed her work as well. Um, I'm very good friends with her producer as well. So it's like you know. The, the chemistry was there already. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, and that's not the only song we got. We got, we got more coming coming out soon. Yeah, yeah. Unreleased music, you know. Big up Steph as well, man. Ten to no, she's great. Definitely, she's great. Definitely. So what's what do you see next for you? What do you see if you looked out three, four, five years? What do you see as what you'd like to if you could look back and say I I did these things. Um, in the next five years, I see um, everybody that is a fan of music and that likes music will know Kojo fans and his work, you know. Um, people would, you know, adapt to my music and sound as well, and that's do, what I want. Do you see other artists uh, doing Afro Swing? Are you seeing that? Yeah, a lot of people. Um, UK, um, outside of the UK, they wouldn't know it as Afro. I just said it was Afro. Sure, but you're defining what it is. Exactly. Yeah. And um, a lot of people are doing it. But I think that's, I think that's kind of cool. That's sick. Yeah. That's no, great. if you could define a, a category, yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Definitely, man. Um, I'm pleased, you know, and um, we're just gonna keep working and and going to. To the right. So where then? Where does the name come from? Kojo Funds. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, the Kojo is a Ghanaian name uh, for Monday Bones. It's, it's it's kind of like a cultural thing. And the funds, um, you know, I used to before music, I used to do certain things, you know. Um, to make money, and um, my friends gave me that name. You know, the funds part. Yeah. And you put the two together? Exactly. And, and it just felt right. Exactly. And this, the music came along and then it just fitted perfectly. Well, Kodro Funds, I'm, I'm proud to, to say that uh, I had a chance to meet you on the upswing. I appreciate and, that. And uh, you're truly uh, on your way to something special. Thank you very and, much. And uh, being self-made is truly... Uh, Number one. Is, is unique. So yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to, to that, Brett. Who am I? Who are you? Black tap whipping the light, that's how we cruise. Big back ting in the back, that's how we do. Don't do one any man, just give me two. Who am I? Who are you? Black tap whipping the light, that's how we cruise. Big back ting in the back, that's how we do.